All right, we are, we, we are live. Michael Lofito here. Happy Friday, September 14th, 2020. And we are uh, excited for today's guest. We launched this show. For those of you that have seen previous episodes, great. Those of you that haven't, welcome. We launched this way back in April. Uh, Megan Berry, uh, who is with Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate, she was our first guest. And we have all these replays are on our, our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to Marketing Luxury Group to watch 40 previous episodes. Today's our 40th episode. And uh, so excited. I have uh, George Guerra Jr. who is uh, with us today. George, thank you for your time. Listen, Mike, thank you very much. I, I had the, uh, I took some time to look through your past guests and I'm not sure how I made it. You have some incredible people that, that you've interviewed before, but definitely a great honor to, to be a part of your 41st show. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. Uh, I know you're busy, you're in demand and it's funny because actually yesterday, um, if you recall, uh, our good friend, well, my good friend, and I, I know you know him well because I think you were a guest recently, Matt Fagioli out of Atlanta. Um, he, he tagged you in a post because you were on uh, some, some TV um, interview recently. T talk, talk to me about that first off. You know what? Um, Fox News came down and, and they were looking to find information on why people from the Northeast, New York, we're actually moving down to South Florida and Miami. So uh, they, they, they called me for an interview and uh, I got to walk and tour them through one of the listings, which was really cool. Um, and to be quite frank, you know, right now we, we're having a huge exodus from the Northeast and people are coming down, you know, first and foremost, you know, from the tax state that, that we've become here in the South, you know, no, no, no income, no state tax. Um, the weather has been a huge factor, the lifestyle, cost of living, and I think uh, since COVID has hit us, the fact that we've been able to work remote has been an aha uh, moment for a lot of these New Yorkers that, that said, you know what, you know, if I'm going to work remote, what better than to work out of the beach or work out of the suburbs or, or somewhere, you know, le less cramped. So, so huge exodus. And, and Fox noticed it and uh, they came down and had an awesome little interview with it. Oh, that's great. Good for you. Because you, you are a practicing agent as well. You, you, know, you know what? We do it all here. Believe it or not, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm husband and wife. Believe it or not, I, I, I work here with my wife. I'm, I'm actually the broker of the company, but my hands are in everything, as you can imagine. Yeah. And your current role, you're the 2020 chairman of the Miami Association of Realtors, correct? I am. 2020 chairman for the Miami Association of Realtors. Largest association in the nation. If you can imagine that. Second in the world, only behind Toronto, correct? You got it. You've done your research. Good yeah. man. Yeah. I had Teresa Kenny on and she, she uh, brought me up to speed here. So uh, so that's a great topic, a uh, kind of a segue, I guess, uh, the Fox interview you recently had. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm based in the Chicagoland and the suburbs, actually, and we're seeing a healthy luxury market, the healthiest luxury market we've seen in 15 years for residential homes in the suburbs of Chicago. Now, downtown Chicago is really slow. The vertical living, the condo market it is really affected based on uh, COVID-19 and, you know, stringent lockdowns and, you know, violence. And, 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 the, and the third factor is because many executives and C-level, uh, you know, buyers and sellers can work remotely now. So they'd rather work remotely at a beautiful home with a backyard and a pool. Most public pools are closed in Illinois. And so we're seeing a huge uptick in activity in the luxury market. Uh, and I'm sure we're seeing a mass exodus to warmer climates like yourself and tax friendly states. So, you know, you mentioned taxes already. You know, Illinois has got, you know, state income taxes and our property taxes are, are, are terrible. And so tax friendly states i.e. Uh, Texas, Florida, uh, you're seeing uh, Tennessee, Colorado, Arizona. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a few, but uh, you guys are really benefiting uh, from un the unfortunate uh, pandemic, so to speak. But I know New Yorkers are fleeing and as well as you know, people from Connecticut and, 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 and that sort of thing. So talk to me a little bit about that. I'm not gonna hit you with data and statistics unless you, you know, kind of know it uh, at the top of your head. You know what, I, I think it's too early to really see that data and, and statistics on, on what's going on. Uh, and what I'm seeing is, you know, I'm, I'm seeing those 
especially with families, especially those in the high end, you know, luxury market, they're, they're coming down. They want that space in between people. They like the, the, the weather, the lifestyle, the safety. Um, and, and I can honestly go on and on for the reasons why. I, I think right now, uh, especially in, in the up north, that vertical living in the middle of a pandemic doesn't really work. It doesn't work. And, and, and I think we're seeing that exodus you know, accelerated due to that. Um, not to mention that, that us Florida realtors and, and Miami realtors, we've done a phenomenal job advertising and marketing those benefits, you know, to, to those states and to the realtor community as well. I, I think that marketing really played off really well, obviously, you know, after April. Mm -hmm. and, and you and I met last, uh, excuse me, last October at the, I believe it was the 25th annual Miami International Congress event, which I strongly recommend uh, to anybody. Uh, Linda sure. Fernandez does a great job and, and, and her staff, um, but I strongly recommend to anybody watching this that is looking to attend a, a international luxury event and build relationships to attend that event. That, that, that is the place to be. You nailed it on the head. You know, you, you mentioned my CEO, Teresa Kincaid, Linda Fernandez. Nobody does a better job of bringing international in one place under one roof like, like we do. So no doubt, yeah. place to be. And, and Letty Oliver does a great job with, uh, you know, uh, education for Miami Association of Realtors, which leads me to my next question, George. Um, talk to me, you know, Toronto, you think about Toronto as a melting pot as far as uh, ethnicity and, 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 you know, that sort of thing. Miami is a huge international market. So talk to me a little bit about that in general, but also how has COVID-19 affected international buyers or maybe international people that own properties in Miami? Are they, are they coming to the States or they can't during this time? So are they looking to sell? Talk to me about that. So 20 percent of our market is international and, and, and we've been very consistent with them. Um, the last conversation I had with one of my agents was actually a luxury condo uh, and it was a Mexican family that, that was uh, looking to purchase. Um, due to the climate, especially in South America, the, the political climate, the safety climate, um, th there's been a huge influx after COVID attempts, phone calls, how can we buy sight unseen? Um, Definitely coming from that luxury market coming over here. Uh, anybody who had any second thoughts, should I go to Miami? Should I go to South Florida? I, I think their minds have been made up. Not to mention the fact that, that we have a phenomenal interest rate right now, climate going on throughout the whole entire US. And, and, and that as well is, is accelerating those purchases. You know, there's a lot of foreign buyer programs that are out there that allow them to, to leverage some of this cheap money that's out there for financing. So I think COVID, financing, you know, the, the political climate, the, the lack of health safety that's going on in these countries, I, I think it's creating the ultimate catalyst to, to create another surge in the, in the next couple of months, if, if not taking place already. And how long do you see, in your uh, opinion, this continuing on? I've talked to a lot of, uh, you know, agents and because of COVID-19, they believe the exodus from vertical living in, in, in the larger cities is going to continue uh, you know, beyond 2021. Um, what, what are your thoughts? So I don't have a crystal ball, but I definitely, I, I'm a huge optimist. And uh, when it comes to South Florida, especially, um, you know, we are a world city. We become a world city. And when you look at the cost of living, when you look at the price per square foot in real estate, we are one of the, the least expensive world cities out there. So I think it's a huge opportunity to grow. Um, and there's, Huge opportunity to grow from, from that perspective. Um, very optimistic. I, I, I think the best is, is ahead of us. Um, here in South Florida, like, like most uh, metropolitan cities, we've overbuilt in our condos. So, so we have some, some big demands and no doubt the suburbs are, 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 are now taking you know, the, the, the attention away. But that, you know, most condos are in the middle of the city, location, location, location. Once, you know, COVID is out of here and, and that city life comes back, I have no doubt it's going to come back. Mm -hmm. So, again, very, very optimistic. Good. I, I love the optimism. So, a couple things. First off, uh, if anybody has a question for myself or George, 
please, we're streaming this live. And if you are watching the replay after the fact, go ahead and ask uh, your question. You can send me a note. Our contact information uh, is all over the place. Uh, or you can just go to luxurylistingspecials.com. And if you're getting value from this, please don't keep it a secret. Share it. Give us a like. Uh, that sort of thing. This is always helpful um, as we continue this on. So originally, George, more information than perhaps you're, you're, you need, but originally we were doing these Monday, Wednesday, Friday when uh, at the height of the pandemic in April and May, and then due to travel and, and vac vacation and everything else in the summer, we're just doing them uh, weekly. But moving forward, I think we're just going to keep with the, the weekly. It's been very well received. And uh, again, you guys can always watch replays of these. Go to YouTube channel uh, and look up Marketing Luxury Group or go to Facebook. We have a group called Luxury Listing Specials and we post those there. Okay. All right, one of the things um, I'm last... Let me add something real quick. Yes, I please. I love these videos. I love the fact that you've taken the initiative to do this. I, I think after COVID, one of the most powerful things that I've seen from the realtor community is how they're leveraging technology to educate, to connect, to share information. And uh, you and, and a couple other people that I've seen out there, you know, you guys are the leaders going out there, finding real content, things that really move the needle, things that really affect our industry. So to me, after this COVID, what, one of my favorite parts has been, you know, people like you creating this content. So I wanted to give you a quick little shout out. Oh, and, thank you. And for sure, you got to keep this going. No, oh, th thank you so much, Georgia. Actually, there's a sign right below my monitor. I know it's backwards, so you won't be able to read it, but it, it, it's, it's a... It's a uh, literally a headstone, and it says your name on here. It says birth date, date that you passed, and a number of lives affected with a blank and a question mark. And so I do believe that's one of my, uh, my callings is to help raise the bar in the industry because I know there's this difficult time right now. Some people are, are dealing with depression or doubting themselves or doubting their career. And, and so if we can spark some, some confidence, if we can give agents tools and resources, then they can affect lives because there are a lot of frustrated sellers out there that hire an agent, they, they think they, they trust them, they like them. And unfortunately, there, there's a lot of average agents out there. And so we're really all about raising the bar for the industry. I love that, I love that, great job. Thank you. So, so we had on last week, uh, Bill Risser, he did a great job. And he, uh, afterwards, I said, hey, you got anybody you recommend? And, and he brought your name up. So that's actually uh, why I reached out to you immediately after. And one of the things he talked about that you guys had a good conversation on was early on, you know, we, we were encouraged uh, as coaches to reach out to our other real estate agents and our clients to say, hey, just check in on people, see how they're doing. And I believe uh, you, you use the term from caring uh, to, to uh, talk to me about that. I, I don't even want to butcher it. I think, I think this, you know, we got hit by a pandemic and, and nobody has ever been hit by one. We had no idea how to operate. Everybody shut down their, you know, we locked ourselves in our houses. We shut the doors, we closed the blinds. And um, like all entrepreneurs, we have to figure this out, we have to invent. And, and, and I think as, as realtors, most of us, very smartly, we followed our hearts. And the first thing we did is, you know what? You know, pe people are closing down. Let's pick up our phones. Let's get on Zoom and let's reach out and see who needs help. You know, what's going on? Do you have food? Do you have to even toilet paper? You know, and, and it was really reaching out, going back to our basics of getting on the phone and just reaching out and seeing how we can add some sort of value. Mm -hmm. And uh, the shock and awe was for a week, nine days, 10 days. But, but remember this, the governor at least in Florida, made us an essential service. Our lobbying team from the local state and national perspective lobbied on our behalf. We are essential. We had to quarantine where? At home. Home became essential, therefore our business became essential. So we have a scared audience, we have a scared workforce. You know, as, as a broker and as a leader, you know, I, I had to say, you know what, we need to shift this conversation and we need to figure out how to operate in a post-COVID environment. You know, what are the steps that we're doing to keep our customers safe? How are we operating open houses in a safe manner? You know, what technology are we using to show properties online? We need to flex those muscles more than ever because guess what? People still are still coming down and they still need to move. People still need to sell their houses. You know, uh, with, with interest rates as low as they are, people are, are walking out there getting the house of their dreams with the interest rate of a lifetime. 
So us as realtors, we had two options. We can either sink or swim, or we can say, you know what? We are like firemen. We are like police. You know, we are essential. So we're going to go out there and we're going to serve the public. So, so messaging had to change. And that capability concept came up. And, you know, fr fr from our marketing material to the messages that we were creating on Instagram to even the giftings that we were putting on social media, you know, mask on, Zoom meetings, you know, we had to show people that, hey, business was moving forward and this is the way that we're doing it. And, and here's the proof of success on how we're doing it. And, and, and again, anybody who was out there needing real estate services, you know, first went out there and looked out to see who had a good, you know, who do I know with a great reputation? And then what are they doing to move real estate? That was the second question. What are they doing now to move real estate? And, and as agents, we needed to have a great answer for that. So carry great the capability calls. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's a great point. So for example, uh, our first closing that we had that was remote, we talked about that. I created a video and, and was just educating on how a transaction looks now during a pandemic versus uh, before a pandemic, we had a, a, a client, uh, you know, she was in her mid seventies and she interviewed me and she interviewed another agent, George, and the other agent said, wait till after the pandemic before you sell. And I told her, as long as you're comfortable, we're, we're going to have uh, proper precautions in place. We have a, a disclosure that we, we require the buyer's broker to fill out and submit before we'll accept a showing. You know, we have, uh, you know, booties, boot, foot coverings, right, gloves. Uh, we call them touchless showings where we uh, either ourselves or we have the sellers turn all the lights on ahead of time and we tell the buyer's agent, hey, don't, don't open any other doors that you don't need. Don't touch any of the switches. So as long as the seller is comfortable with the process, I said to uh, this client, I said, Gene, I said, we are in the prime time to sell right now uh, rates are great and a lot of your competition is going to wait a few months so for those active buyers that are looking now if your home's not on the market you can't sell it and so we put her home on we got it sold it got it closed before you know uh, the other uh, competition even came on let me tell you this I think this if, if you are a seller right now there's low inventory there's a lot of eyes on on the market the first showing, as you know, Mike, happens online, okay? And more importantly, especially in the luxury market, this becomes an emotional decision. It's not even logic, it's emotional at this point. You know, your personal residence, you know, your practitioner, the smart, let me rephrase it, the smartest real estate practitioners, in my opinion, put themselves in an opportunity to create that emotion as much as possible. And I, I think in this COVID environment, where there's less inventory, you have a greater opportunity of creating that emotion. I, I think those that are waiting in the sidelines are missing out on a great opportunity. And, and we know that luxury markets has their days in the market. You know, they don't sell one day to the next. So again, you know, the, I, I love to say like fishing, I like to keep my lure in the water. So when that fish comes by, you know, I have that opportunity to snag it. So prime time, low interest rates, low inventory. You know, we don't know where this market is heading. You know, very smart to, 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 to unload it right now if you're talking about it. And if you're a buyer, you know, with, with holding power, long term, this is the time to, to, to get a, lot, a great interest rate and, and find that house of your dreams. Now's the time. Yeah, you, you, you hit a bunch of good, I call them gold nuggets. You had a bunch of gold nuggets in there, George. You're absolutely right. Uh, as a seller, you know, having that, the fishing line in there, you can't catch the fish unless you're, you're fishing. And so I just had this conversation this week. I have a $2 million listing. It's been on 54 days. We've had one showing. It's in a town called Wheaton, Illinois. And over the last two years, the highest sale in Wheaton, Illinois is 1.375. And we're at 2 million. So I told, because he said, should we take the house off? You know, I said, no, let's not take it off because we know it's going to either sell in the first 60 to 90 days or it could take years. But the good news is the, the prime selling season in Chicago is typically, you know, March, April to, to June. Everything's gotten pushed back a little bit, but more now so than ever, there's more C-level executives looking to get out of the city into the suburbs. So you want to keep your home on during this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so talk to me a little bit about um, your market as far as somebody's got a referral in the Miami area. What markets do you serve and, and what's the best way 
uh, George, somebody can get a hold of you? Great, great question. So, so right now, we have offices from Key Largo all the way down to Coral Gables. So we, we can pretty much service all of South Florida. We have over 500 agents that, that, that are under our company. Um, and the best way to find us is online. If, if you Google my name, I should be the first person besides another football player to come out. Uh, my company's name is RESF, Real Estate Salesforce, uh, RESF for short. You know, we, we have a big digital presence online. Um, I, I'll, I'll share this with you, with, which, which Michael, I think you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy. Coming into COVID, uh, we had a back end uh, where, where we collaborate as a company called Workplace. You know, very, very powerful from a collaboration perspective. We've had it for, you know, five or six years already. And as a real estate company, we videotape every single one of our listings, residential or commercial. So when we hit COVID, from a communication perspective, we were talking. From a listing perspective, we were still able to show. And uh, again, I, 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 that's a, a little bit about us. So if you are interested in, in working with us or referring any business to us, think that the latest tech, the latest services are gonna be well represented. Uh, with, with that being said, Mike, I wanna thank you again for having me on your show. Yeah, a absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, George. It was a pleasure. You know, I have, uh, I'm trying to think of who else I recently had on, uh, but you, you, you remind me so much of um, like the, that, that individual from the standpoint of uh, you're, 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 for, you're, you're in the forefront, you're outside the box, you're aggressive, uh, high energy, and um, you got your finger. Listen, I'm in South Florida and I'm an independent company. This is one of the most competitive markets in the world. If, if I'm not on top of my game, if I'm not trying to surf in front of what's going on, you know, if I'm not out there aggressively, you know, trying to make some moves, this market will eat me for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a great point. So again, uh, thank you so much, George. Uh, we're going to be posting this, as I said, on our our YouTube channel, check it out, Marketing Luxury Group. If you guys have any questions, let me just double check before on the stream, see if we have any questions. If you have any questions for George or myself after this, in other words, you stumble on this after the fact, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, and we'll be sure uh, to, to answer your questions. And, uh, but George, thank you so much. You guys have a great Friday. Have a great Labor Day. Keep raising the bar in real estate. And, and as my good friend uh, from NARAB once says, seek to understand. There's a lot of stuff going on before you prejudge people. A lot of stress, you know, racial thank tensions you. right now. Seek to understand. Keep raising the bar in real estate. Have a great Friday and have a great Labor Day. Thanks, George. Thank you, Mike. See you, right. see you in person soon. Yes, sooner than later, please. Take care.